so now the next thing is you are going to run the oxalic acid out of your burette into your sodium hydroxide solution. But first of all, we need to prepare our burette. It needs to be clean. We're going to clean it first with some tap water. Here's our tap. The tap is open when it's vertical and closed when it's horizontal. I'm going to add some tap water from a beaker. I don't need to fill it. I'm going to let some out of the tip. But I'm not going to waste all my time to let it all come through, so I'm then going to swirl it, opening the tap at the end. I'm going to repeat that about three times with tap, tap water. I'm then going to do the same with some distilled water, again making sure that it goes through the tip and that I swirl it out, touching all sides and opening the tap at the same time. Then give that a little shake, close the tap, dry the outside if needed, and then I'm going to rinse it with a bit of my acid solution. Here's my acid solution, I've got another beaker, carefully labelled acid, a bit of my acid in here, this beaker, by the way, needs to be clean and dry because we don't want too much water in there to change its concentration. Okay? Or you could have added, you could have washed it with tap water and distilled water and then added a little bit of the acid to rinse out any distilled water and then added your acid to here. I'm going to rinse my burette with a little acid. I don't want to waste my acid. Through the tap. And then hold it almost horizontal and rinse that out so we get all the sides of the glass covered and let that out. Okay. Then over here to my burette sand. I'm going to fill my burette with the acid. Please make sure you don't keep your conical flask under because if you spill any of the acid into there, then again, you have to start again. So I'm going to add my acid. Just about here. I've gone slightly past the zero. So I'm just going to then add some out. You don't have to get it on zero, by the way. I've actually shot past the zero because I'm not going to waste my time getting it to zero. As long as I record the value here to the nearest 0.05 cc's. 0.05 cc's. You can read, if you can come closer, can you see the smallest division on here is 0.1 cc. You should be able to see when the bottom of the meniscus is halfway between two, which means you can read to 0.05 cc's. So any data should be recorded to that precision. Okay. You're then going to take a note of this reading. It's 0.60 cc's. 0.60 cc's. You note that down in your results table as your initial burette reading. Oh, I've forgotten something. You need to make your, sure your burette tip is filled. I, I made sure mine was filled because I let some acid out. But if, this, if, if no liquid has come through here, you need to empty it until you get rid of any air bubbles from this tip. Okay? You might then need to refill your burette, perhaps, or just start with it close to the zero point. Mine's filled. I've got my conical flask. It asks me to add some indicator. I'm going to add about two or three drops of phenylphthalein indicator. One, two. I've got two drops. I 
I've got a nice pink color. And we will be titrating to the end point, which is when the color of the solution just disappears. For that purpose, I'm not going to use a blue background. I'm going to use a white tile. So I can see when that happens. Now, the first titration doesn't matter so much. You can go fairly quickly. But still, you might get a good value. I'm right-handed, but I use my left hand to operate the burette. I wrap my fingers around, and I'm going to operate the burette with these two fingers. And with my right hand, I'm going to use that to swirl. That's what I mean by swirling. Get a nice swirl going on. I'm going to do that to mix the acid and the alkali thoroughly. And so, here we go. I'm going to... My, my tap is too stiff. Okay, there we go. Here we go. And I'm going to add that, swirling as I go. And you should be able to get these things just drop dropwise addition as well, which you want to do as the colour starts to change. Add that, swirling, oh, you can see my colours gone. So in that case, I've gone way past the end point, okay? I take my final reading here, I've got a approximately 20, well no, I've got 26.30, that's my final burette reading. I subtract the two burette readings and I can find out how much of my acid was required to neutralize my 25 cc's of sodium hydroxide. I'm then going to repeat the whole process. I'm going to fill this up again, I'm going to get rid of this, empty it, wash it thoroughly with tap water, distilled water, Add another 25 cc's of my sodium hydroxide with the uh, pipette and repeat the process. But this time, we've got a nice rough value, so we know approximately how much acid was required to neutralize the base. Next time, I can add the first 80% of that volume quickly, but as I get closer to that endpoint, I'm going to want to start adding drop by drop. Okay? Because we should be get to a, get, able to get to a point when I add just one drop of this solution and it will change the colour from pink to colourless. And you're going to repeat that process until you can get about two equal results for the volume of acid added. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much, Nikki, for helping video.